Hi everyone, I am Zain Khan. Welcome back to another video in this Robotics 101 video series. Today's video is going to be very interesting. We are going to talk about what it means when we say that the robot is at a singularity. And also, how do we find out when a robot is at a singularity? So without further ado, let us begin. So just to give you a bit of a recap. So in the previous videos, we talked about velocity ellipsoid. So for a two hour robot here, I have drawn the velocity ellipsoid. If you don't remember, velocity ellipsoid just shows you all the possible velocities the end effector of a robot can achieve at a particular configuration. What this word configuration means is at a particular position. So for this case, the position would be described by the two joint angles, which is here, this one, theta one, and this one, theta two. So the velocity ellipsoid shows you the, all the possible velocities that this robot can achieve at this particular joint angles, theta one and theta two. So if I give you any velocity within this um, parallelogram, you can be sure that the robot is capable of achieving those velocities. Now, if I were to reduce theta two, so if initially my theta two was this and I reduced it to this, now we can see that the velocity ellipsoid kind of flattens up and it shrinks and it flattens up. And now let me take it a step up and let me make theta two as zero. So if I make theta two as zero, we end up with this scenario. So you see that the velocity ellipsoid has just shrunk to a single line. So it has just shrunk to a single line. This is all just a recap of what we did in the previous video. So it has shrunk to a single line and the robot can now only move along this line. So the robot cannot achieve a velocity in any other direction except this line. So it can achieve any velocity either parallel to this line. So it can achieve this or this. It can it cannot obviously exceed the length of this velocity ellipsoid, but what it cannot do is it cannot achieve any velocity. Let's say it cannot achieve a velocity in this direction. And this particular position is known as the singularity of a robot. So what a singularity means is it is the particular configuration at which a robot loses its ability to move in a certain direction. Or we can say that it, block, it gets blocked in certain directions. And you notice the word configuration in this. So it is a particular configuration at which the robot loses its ability to move in a certain direction. So in this case, so the configuration would be when the theta two becomes zero, right? The theta one can be any angle. It can be zero, 90 or any 180 or any arbitrary angle. It doesn't matter. As long as theta two is going to be zero, we are always going to end up with this scenario where the velocity ellipsoid becomes a straight line. So we can say that the singularity point for this robot is when theta two becomes zero degrees. So the next question comes, how do we find out when a robot gets to a singularity point? So in order to understand that, let us begin with this equation. So we have been dealing with this equation for a long time. This just tells us how the Jacobian maps the joint velocities to the end effector velocities. And in other words, if you give me any joint velocities, I just input the joint velocities into this equation multiplied by the Jacobian and I get the end effective velocity. Now let me put it another way. Now let's say if you give me any end effective velocity and I need to find out the required joint velocities in order to achieve that particular end effective velocity. So you give me any end effective velocity. So you give me any x dot and I need to find out the theta dot vector in order that would make the robot move at, the, at that particular end effective velocity. So the way to do that would be simply to just take the Jacobian inverse and bring it to the other side. So this equation right here. So what I've done is I've taken the Jacobian and put it to, another, to the other side and we get this equation. And in this equation, I can see that if you give me any end effective velocity, I just multiply it with the Jacobian inverse and I would get the joint velocity. So this would work for any end effective velocity, right? 
So I can always find out some joint velocities to make the robot achieve any effective velocity, right? And if I get to this equation, that it, then it means that the robot won't be at a singularity, right? Because if I get to this equation somehow, then I can always achieve any velocity in any direction for some particular joint velocities, right? So in order to find out the singularity point, what I need to do is I need to find a way of preventing this happening. So I would need to find out a way of preventing this equation from being achieved. So I need to find out a way in such that I cannot go from this equation to this equation. So just to reiterate myself, I need to find out a way so that I cannot move from this equation on the top, this equation right here, and I cannot move from this equation to this equation. And if I can find out a way, then I can figure out where the singularity of the robot dies. And if you just look at these two equations, what I did was I took the inverse of the Jacobian. So in order to prevent the, the, this bottom equation from being achieved, I have to somehow remit the inverse of the Jacobian from being found out. So what I need to do is, I need to make the Jacobian matrix non-invertible. And just to give you a quick refresher, what non-invertible means is that I cannot find out the inverse of a matrix. Like, to, I have to make it non-invertible so I cannot find out the inverse of Jacobian. And if I cannot find out the inverse of Jacobian, then I, then I cannot achieve this equation, right? So just bear with me. I know it might start getting a little confusing, but just trust me, it is all going to make sense. And we are going to get to the point that we are going, that we are trying to achieve very soon. So we have to make the Jacobian non-invertible. And in order to make a matrix non-invertible, we need to make sure that it satisfies two conditions. The first is it must be a square matrix. And we know that the Jacobian for the case of a planar robot is generally a three cross three matrix. So this condition square matrix is always going to be satisfied. And the other condition is we need to make its determinant zero. So the takeaway is in order to find the singularities of the robot, all we need to do is we need to find out the Jacobian of the robot and set it to zero. That is all that is to know about this. So all that we did in the last five minutes to just sum it up is in order to find the singularities of the robot, we just find out the Jacobian of a robot and set the determinant of that Jacobian to be zero. Now let us see this in action. So let me put an example up. So this is a two hour robot and we already drive the Jacobian of this robot in the previous videos. So I'm not going to drive it again. So just putting it out here, this is the Jacobian. And in order to find out the singularities, I set the determinant of the Jacobian zero and I get to this equation. So in this equation, I can see that I get a st structural singularity, which is when A1 or A2 becomes zero in length. If either of them become zero in length, then what this robot shrinks down to a single rod rotating in a circle. And we know that if a rod is rotating in a circle, so its tip velocity is always going to be perpendicular to the rod. So it loses its ability to move in certain directions. So it is going to be at a singularity. But normally, we aren't quite concerned with structural singularity. In robotics, what we are more concerned about is the specific configuration at which this singularity occurs. So for this case, setting sine theta 2 to be 0, we get theta 2 as 0 or 180 degrees. So just to show you these two configurations. So here is the configuration when theta 2 is 0. So in this configuration, this robot can either move in this direction or in this direction. No matter how big or how small the theta 1 dot and theta 2 dot are. And again, in this configuration where theta 2 is 180, it can either move in this direction or it can move in this direction. So we can see that the robot has lost its ability to move in certain directions. Now I have another example. I would want you to give it a try on your own. 
So this is just a three hour robot. So it is quite similar to the one that we did before. It just has an end effector at the end. And now the Jacobian is a three cross three matrix, which is a generic case of the Jacobian. And in order to find out the singularity, we just said the determinant of the Jacobian to be zero. So give it a try and see if you can find out where the, where the singularities of this robot dies. I hope you did give it a try. So when I find out the determinant and set it equal to zero, I again find out that for this particular robot two, the singularities are going to be when theta two is zero degrees or 180 degrees. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. If you have any queries or confusions, leave them in the comments below. I will make sure I reply to every single query or confusion. And if you have any comments regarding this video or any other video, do let me know. And as always, see you in the next video and thank you for watching.